I decided I wanted to be a soldier probably when I was at a younger age um, with my stepdad. He was in the 82nd, and before that, my grandfather was a, a veteran of World War II. He was a Marine in the Pacific. And then I grew up watching John Wayne movies and kind of wanted to live that life, if you will. I thought that was the greatest honor that, you, that a person could ever have was to serve for the United States. I was doing very well going through basic training and the drill sergeants noticed it early on and they asked me if I wanted to be a ranger. I was like, what's that drill sergeant? He's like, roger that, you're gonna go be a ranger. Roger drill sergeant, he's like, get, get out of here. I'm like, okay. So I ran away, got, got a um, contract for a RASP and uh, volunteered for that. Went to RASP, did very well in RASP. I ended up graduating with honors. I was the honor grad. Um, combatives champ and I came in second for PT stud. When I realized I did really well in, um, in RASP, I, I wanted to do really well when I got to um, my unit, 75th Ranger Regiment and 3rd Battalion. And uh, my hard work that I carried over when I got to my platoon and I was standing out amongst the other privates as well. And I ended up going to ranger school earlier than what I was probably than, than most. I've been in I've been in ranger management since 2010, and I've been on four deployments in the last three years. The early deployments, growing up in uh, ranger management, is a can be a, a daunting task to anybody that's not real willing to step up to the plate. Um, as a private, you're asked to do a lot, you're asked to learn a lot in a short amount of time, and you're asked to exceed expectations at all times. If they think you're going to do so well, you, you need to be thinking that you're going to do better than what they think. And that kind of, that tone setting that the team leaders have for privates is um, very instrumental in your growth as a leader. You learn to take on stress, and take on tasks while dealing with that stress and overcome. And that kind of training will helps you out through your entire career. I'd have to say though that when growing up and like growing up with the guys that I graduated RAS from, that going through the same um, hardships that everybody else has gone through and then you know succeeding at it being successful at going through those hardships really set the tone for my time that I was going to be that I was that I that I'm in um, with the Ranger Regiment and my platoon and my company and I'd have to say that dealing with that in those earlier deployments you know going on deployment and growing up with these particular set of guys is I have relationships with these men that I have better relationships with these almost or complete strangers three years ago are closer to me than some of my own family. The next day after my birthday, October 5th, we got, the, we got a, enough intel on who we were going to that we wanted to, we wanted to go take this guy down. We're all excited about the type of mission that we were doing that day. Um, it was something, it was, it was a unique way of what, of, uh, what we were, what we do. We hadn't done it before and we were really excited to um, get this guy. And uh, so my birthday had passed but I still figured this was going to be my birthday mission so I was going to zip tie that American flag to my back. And um, I had a pretty cool carry out that, or load out that day with the flag on my back. I got a lot of compliments. And um, we got the mission, got the, um, had the plan and everything, and we're all getting in line uh, to get on the helicopters. And we do a helicopter impel just off to the, it was the south of the compound within running distance. Got up to the compound and we kind of, we hadn't really, we didn't have a good feeling that night with that, and um, there's a squad leader that kind of said the same thing. We didn't like where we were at. 
when we were starting to tell these people to come come to us, I had the one guy. There's a there's two uh, personnel in the compound. There was a a man and a and a woman, but it was a man dressed as a woman. And I told the man to come up and uh, start walking towards me with his hands in the air. When he got within arm's reach of me, I grabbed at him and started pulling him back. At that time, his buddy jumped up and ran at us and exploded. And it sent me flying 35 feet into a minefield and sent another um, ranger, ranger buddy of mine 20 feet and he had multiple shrapnel wounds. And then we had, there was, there's a lot of guys that had a lot, multiple shrapnel wounds and um, uh, TBI from, from, the, from the blast and the other blast to follow. My, when I landed, I kind of was a little dazed and a little confused as to what actually happened. I was, I, I didn't really know if that had actually happened. Was I dreaming it or, or what? Then I kind of came to and, Kind of looked at my body and saw my feet and realized they were still attached, so that was good. Looked at, uh, looked back at the skyline to see if I could see anything, and I saw what was left of the building and um, realized that I was still here. And I, um, and I thought to myself, "Man, Janine's gonna be mad." <laughs> so when she hears this, one of my medics come running in. And we, where I was, where I landed, we found out later was a minefield. And somehow we must have missed every one of them or they just low ordered, but um, they drag, he dragged me out of there and we got to the uh, casualty collection point and was med medevaced within 10 minutes. Um, before I got to the helicopter, they assessed my wounds and they saw that I had lost my right eye. Um, I had a collapsed left lung, and my foot was broken with multiple shrapnel wounds in my legs, like up and down my left side. My legs suffered a lot of um, shrapnel wounds. I had two tourniquets on my legs, one on my left and right. I had three needle decompressions in my chest, and I had uh, the medic's fingers in my right eye socket because I was bleeding pretty bad out of it. We lost four good friends that day um, with uh, multiple injured. It was, um, it's, it, was a, it was the largest mass, mass casualty that we had taken in a very, very long time. And um, that was pretty hard for a lot of us, especially in our company. We hadn't seen that in a while. And um, but the thing with guys like us is that we honor our comrades every day by putting the helmet and the kit back on and going back out and continuing the work that is asked of us no matter what. I'd have to say my initial reaction when I found out about my injuries was, wow, still here. That's pretty amazing. And then I, and it started to sink in more and more throughout the days um, of uh, what was, what, you know, of what had happened to me. And I realized that, because I could see after they took the bandage off and I was able to see, I wasn't too concerned really about my injuries. It was more or less how long was it going to take for me to get back to where I was before. And there's really nothing that has surprised the doctors except for the level of speed that my body has been recovering. When I last went up to Walter Reed to see the doctors that last saw me in a bed, they didn't think I was going to be walking yet. And I walked up there and I had a cane and a walking boot. I probably downplay it more than... I should, but the biggest thing with my attitude is, is that I've had this attitude my entire life, is that nothing's going to stop me from accomplishing what I want to accomplish. And I figured I got, I still have everything except one eye. And I have low vision in my left eye. 
but I still have enough to where I can see. I can't drive right now, but I can run. I'm just waiting on my foot to heal. But the biggest thing is that I, fe uh, I figured out that I have some visual scars. I got some emotional scars too from it, but I got the visual scars that go with what had happened to me. And when people see me doing better than them in the weight room, for example, they want to better themselves. So the attitude that I bring to the table is, is that no matter what has happened to you, it can always get better. When you think it is as wor it couldn't get any worse, okay. Now, how do you build off of what you have right now? You have X. You need to get, or you have this. You need this. What do I need to do to get that? What do I? You never stop asking yourself, what do you need to get? What do you need to do to get to get what you want? And when you figure it out, you go for it. Towards the Army and the Rangers, my attitude would be that I've had a great support system from my chain of command all the way down to my, to my lowest level of responsibility. It's been nothing but great and supportive for me. Our attitude will always be the same. We'll always look to improve ourselves and improve our situation as best we can with what we got. And we keep trying to always build off of what we have. That we use yesterday's mistakes to build for a better tomorrow.